All right, I believe everybody's here. Time for meeting. Stand with me, please. I will call the meeting to order. And I'm going to ask Dr. Charlie, if he will, to lead us prayer tonight. Lord, we thank you for today. Thank you for the school, its faculty, and its students. Thank you for the privilege we have to help participate in the oversight. Just give us the wisdom to oversee it well, spend well, think well, and stay out of the way with it. This school is going to use blessings to somebody and let us all be there. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Charlie. Yep, Any public comment? We all do that, yeah. If not, we'll move to item number three consider and discuss naming the new. PBCC president. Okay. All right, all I need is motion. Well, we, I don't know if you want to have any discussion in advance of the, of, of the motion or not, but uh, we have Dr. Morrison with us tonight. Dr. Jason Morrison, would you like thank you. Um, Anybody have any questions or discussion or? I'd, I'd just like to say, go we're happy. The process always takes a while, and I think it was, uh, was very careful and critically done. So it speaks very, very well. And we'll be delighted to have you as part of it. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, David. Anyone else have anything to say? Would ask for a motion. All right. I'm going to ask for a motion to approve <coughs> Dr. Jason. Uh, as new president of TBCC. Uh, David, uh, Don, David Monk, you're going to make that motion? I'll be happy. Okay, you're going to make the motion out here a second? Yes. Uh, Jerry Stone seconds it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed like sign. Motion carried unanimously. Congratulations. Congratulations, Dr. Jason. Would you like to say a few words? Uh, I would just like to say I'm, I'm very humbled by this. I want to say thank you. I cannot right now put into words the excitement and enthusiasm I have to join uh, the Cardinal family. Uh, I'm ready to hit the ground running. Uh, so let's get a running shoes on. Uh, but I, I feel like this is truly a blessing in my life, in my family's life, to have this opportunity. And um, I, I look forward to serving this institution, like serving our communities. And um, uh, I, I pray every day, you know, since this process started, that I'll, I'll have the, the ability to. To live up to the legacy of Dr. King and and others, I spoke to Miss Glenda uh, on Friday talking to her about her husband and what TVCC meant to him, and it just reassured me. I mean, I don't have any purposes in life, but I think one purpose in life I have is helping enrich the lives of of students, helping them find opportunities to be successful, and helping our communities grow and become unified and, uh, and stronger, you know, day in and day out. And so thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, my wife and little one could not be here tonight, but uh, the excitement they have about this, this, this uh, the little one just wants autographs of the cheer squad. <laughs> uh, but no, thank you. Uh, I know I have big shoes to fill. Um, and I'm going to work every day. I always tell people, let me tell you first. Well, the reason I don't fail is because I don't stop working. You can only fail in life when you stop. And uh, so I, I, I say, let me tell you first. And we're all going to be pleased with what we see in the end. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. If all of you would hang around when it's over with, I'd like 
for the board to have a picture made with our new president. So we'll do that immediately after the meeting. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, all right, we'll move to President's report. I've got a few items I'd like to kind of go over, some highlights of some things that's happened in the last few weeks. I put some information in front of you so you'd see it, you could take it with you, or we can look at it uh, later. But we had a, a big audit last week. Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board was on campus. They do this about every five or six years. They did it six years ago, my first or second year that I became after I became president. I just got to brag on the audit team and on the audit itself, we had zero recommendations and zero findings. And that is unbelievable. There's not very many community colleges in Texas that I'm aware of that had zero and zero. So I just want to say they did a great job. We had Tammy Denny, Philip Parnell, David Hopkins, Spencer Wagney, Wagley, Kristen Stazera, Carolyn Whitaker, and Stephanie Gold. They were all involved in it. They did a great job in preparation for it. And then they did a great job when the auditor was here, my auditors were here, making sure all the information was available to them. So congratulations. That's probably won't happen again for another five or six years. And I'm just ecstatic that we made it in this uh, this audit uh, and we're able to do with the things that we were doing. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> we also found out last week that we got a grant called Talent Strong Texas Pathways. It's a $16 million statewide grant, five-year statewide economic mobility grant. Uh, we're one of, I believe, 22 community colleges that were, 22, I believe, maybe 21 or 22 that got this grant. We don't know exactly how much money it's going to be for the college, but it will be a substantial amount and it will be used each year for the next five years. So we're very proud of also being able to get that grant. We also had a ribbon cutting ceremony last Saturday. I'm, I was very proud to be there for that. It was a ribbon cutting and reception for citizenship classes that we're offering in Kaufman County. And we had about 35 or 40, maybe even more than that, citizens, people that wanna be citizens of the United States that were there uh, for the ribbon cutting and were there for the, uh, for the reception. And I'm, I'm again proud of uh, the fact that TBCC is involved in that process. Uh, we also had the mayor of uh, Terrell there, Mayor Cor Cormona. We had uh, Keith Bale. We had uh, uh, executive director of the of the uh, uh, the uh, United uh, the board the board members of the Kaufman County United uh, Community Organization. We had the Chamber of Commerce with Carlton Kidwell. Proud to have that happen as well. We also received word last week that we received another grant from the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board. This is a nursing shortage grant. It's for $175,970.81. That's a grant that they give out for us to help us uh, do some things that we need to do to encourage enrollment and to encourage um, students to get into the nursing program. Also, I want to mention, and I think most of you are probably already aware of this, but we have a uh, property for sale. We have 154 acres, 154.9 acres for sale. Um, Steve Grant has been working with us on this for how long, Steve? Oh, years. Long time, long, long time. But this is Kilman property, Dr. Kilman's property in Malakoff. And this is the last piece of the property. There were three pieces of property. This is the last piece of property that's for sale. Uh, we have a realtor that's helping us work with this, uh, Frank Roberts with the uh, Real Estate Max Landmark out of, uh, I believe, out of uh, Carroll and out of uh, Canton. Um, we are, are advertising for it. I think we just decided it would be 90 days. Is that correct, Steve? Uh, well, the contracts are supposed to be in by May 1st. <clears throat> and they'll be opened up by our attorney on May 2nd and the closings on June 2nd. So I want to, again, really express appreciation to Steve in the real estate business. He's helped us through this process. Uh, we, we believe this is going to be obviously a big uh, opportunity for TBCC. We're going to be able to use this property for the other ranch that we were able to, property that we were able to acquire from the Kilman Estate. I believe that's 165 acres over on Lover's Lane. I forgot what the FM road is for that. But we'll be able to use this funds for this to be able to do things on that property build a barn, do some things on there that we can enhance our agriculture program. 
Also, I want to mention the Beef Cattle Show team. They had a <coughs> successful week last week at the Houston Livestock Show. It was their last show of the year. Uh, Mark Robinson does a great job with that, and um, they did a great job this year. Also, I want to mention the uh, the basketball team. Both basketball teams are in the regional playoffs. The uh, the Cardinals play. Um, men's basketball team plays at 3 o'clock on Thursday, uh, and they play the winner of the Coastal Bend Harris Junior College uh, team, and that, those games are played at Wagstaff Gym at Tyler Junior College. I just got – I can't say enough about the women's basketball team. Uh, they're 28 and 2. They're ranked number five in the nation. They were co champs of their conference. Um, I, just to give you some info, just to tell you a little bit about the dynasty that we have in women's basketball, this was the 30th time in the last 32 years they either shared or won the conference championship. They have, they made the, the, um, the national tournament 15 straight times in a row. They've been to the national tournament 27 times. They've been runner-up in the national title seven times. They've won the national title eight times. If that's not a dynasty, I don't know what a dynasty is. Mm -hmm. And believe me, our women's basketball team is known all over the country. And it 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 really makes a it makes a lot uh, for it does a lot for our college overall to have that kind of a of a of a of a impression and that kind of thing that's going on with our team. The Lady Cardinals, they play um, this Wednesday at 6 o'clock, also over at Wagner Wagstaff Gym. Also, I want to mention the TBCC Rodeo team. This uh, coming week, they're in Bryan College Station uh, for the Texas A&M Rodeo. And this, they also have a rodeo. Our TBCC Rodeo is coming up, and it's on um, April the 21st and 22nd. So hopefully you'll mark that on your calendar and you can come to our rodeo. In the past years, it was in February. It was always really, really cold. So I don't think it's going to be that. I think the weather's going to be good for us. So we'll have a rodeo at that time. The last thing I wanted to mention is our next board meeting. Uh, we had talked about this at our last board meeting. Um, normally, the board, next board meeting would come on March the 27th. I've talked to a couple of board members already. I think I think we would like to, to reschedule that possibly for April the 3rd. That gives us a little bit of extra time to be able to do some things. If we don't reschedule it, there's only really two full weeks between now and with spring break at college being next week. There's only two full weeks between the next board meeting. So um, I'll let you make that decision. But I think um, it was a recommendation that we have our next board meeting on, on April the 3rd. There's no decision. It just give me a thumbs up or you can tell us if that's what you want to do or not. But if anybody opposes that, let me know. And we'll change it. That's all right with everyone. So okay. we'll move forward with it. And if, if there's a problem with April the 3rd, at some point, you can let me know. But uh, that would be great for us. And that's everything I have. Anybody have any questions for me? Okay. okay. We'll move to item number five. We have uh, <clears throat> minutes of uh, some meetings mm -hmm. that we need to approve. January the 18th, 19th, 20th, February the 2nd. February the 9th of 2023. So do I hear a motion to approve those minutes? Uh, Jerry makes a motion, Steve, uh, Perry seconds the motion. Any further discussion? If not all in favor, say aye. aye. All opposed, like sign, motion carries. All right, number six, consider the business financial and investment report for December of 2022. We'll give that to David. David. Yes, sir. Uh, real briefly, Lord, I wanted to just point out a few things starting with the revenue. Uh, enrollment, uh, I think we talked about this last meeting, is 4.02% uh, as of December. As we talked about January, I think that's going to be more like 2%. As we talked about, we some of the uh, enrollment took place a little earlier this year than last year. Uh, the housing, food service, and bookstore are still doing well. Uh, and we talked about the rate increases uh, in both housing and food service, uh, both between 5 and 9%. I did want to point out, we, as of January, uh, on the sheet, uh, we have met and exceeded the food service budget. Um, either I was too conservative or we had more kids eating. I'm not sure which, but. And the thing that, uh, 
I didn't want anybody to hyperventilate if you look at property taxes. It would appear that we were $1.6 million uh, below last year. That's not the case. We had, a, Stephanie and I found it today, we had a December 31st payment that I think came in later in January from Kaufman. Uh, they got posted to January. Uh, we're going to correct that just so our comparatives next year are appropriate. Uh, if you look at January, we're, we went from 18, 8 million to 18 million, which is not unusual. January is when it's due. And so I just wanted to point that out to everybody. Um, property taxes did not go down. Uh, the only thing I want to mention on the expenses, the one thing I didn't notice uh, on communication, uh, we're, we're not really, expenses are not really that high. We had Again, some timing and when we reported the all the phone lines to the departments uh, that took place in December this year, last year, I believe it was March. So that's going to that expense side is going to level out. Um, and the second time, I'll just see if anybody has any questions. Uh, I think everything's pretty well on track. Uh, Stephanie, you have the next page. Let's talk about um, cash real quickly. Uh, same sheets that y'all always see. We've got the uh, good cash balance, both in operating and cap reserve. Cap reserve is 22887. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, your investment report that we're required to give you at least one support on the next page. Uh, and again, just to repeat the same information, but. Uh, we give it to you every month as opposed to quarterly. And then the last page on the cap reserve. One thing I did want to point out, and I think we talked about this last month. Uh, this is this balance is going to go up uh, 6.1 million in February when we transferred the last of the remaining funds from last year. And, and also, I did want to report. Uh, some help from Dr. King and my controller. I think that uh, the city of Terrell is uh, going to collect that money on the parking lot, which would be about another 300000 that we will put in cap reserve uh, since that's where the project came out of. And, and hopefully that's going to come in this month. You might have any questions on that. I know that's a long time coming, but we've been talking to them quite a while. Next page is the over 25,000. Uh, want to see if anybody had any questions on those. Can you explain what this uh, $209,000 grant return funds is? Yeah, I think Kristen. So this was um, the, the true grant you know, that we had received. And the deadline to, to spend everything was October the 22nd. And due to some um, issues with timing and some delays that we've had, we actually filed for an extension with COPOR and we filed for an, a budget adjustment. Both of those were denied. So we, of the 500,000, we spent you know, roughly 300,000 of the grant, but then we did have to return the part that we weren't able to spend. So when when we um, when we apply for a grant that that's based on a program, we have most of the time it's a new program, so it's a program that we don't have approval for. So we had to get SAC CLC approval, cohort approval to offer the program and Department of Ed approval. That came in in June, and then we were looking to start the program in August, and then. Um, because of the fact that we basically didn't get to start the program in August, we had to push it back a few weeks to start the program. We weren't able to award out all of the scholarships that we needed to award. So we were hoping to be able to do an adjustment to pull from what we had originally accounted for in the, in the grant proposal to be able to purchase some additional supplies that we wanted to do. But the, um, the original grant told us that we couldn't repurpose the money, the money that way. And so because it was it was requested in the original grant for specific items, our hands were tied and that we couldn't spend. Uh, next page, uh, the 
That's all I've got. Anyone have any questions? If not, do I hear a motion to consider uh, to approve the business financial and investment report for December of 2022? Mm -hmm. Dr. Uh, Jerry Stone makes a motion. Dr. Clayton seconds a motion. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item number seven, discuss TVCC Highway 175 road property in Kaufman EDC property. Board, I would like to table this um, agenda item. Uh, we, we thought we would have additional information uh, and, and we do not. So I would like to table this to talk about it at a later time. Okay. I, I believe that there's probably going to be uh, a, a proposal from the Kaufman Economic Development Corporation that will come forward maybe in the next two months, three months, uh, where they're, they are going to propose the purchase of some of this property. And so it, they weren't ready to do that tonight. Uh, I will tell you that we've spent a lot of time. Uh, Steve Grant has really helped us on this as well. And Mike Emery, uh, working on the best use of this property and uh, working with TechDot and working with a lot of other people, Corey for interest as well. Well, by the way, we also worked with a, a planning and design consultant from Kimley Horn by the name of Paul McCracken that Steve uh, happened to uh, put us in touch with. And uh, at this time, I think we're just TechDot's, there's a lot of uncertainty with what TechDot's going to do. There's a lot of uncertainty about what's going to happen to Fair Road. Uh, in the future, yeah, and I don't think we can make any good decisions at this time without learning more about uh, the direction they're going and the direction that the EDC is wanting to go. Okay. So we just want to type. I make a motion to type that. Okay, Ron makes a motion. Mike seconds motion to table this uh, proposal on Highway 175 and Fair Road. And with the Kaufman EDC property. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item number eight discuss TVCC Workforce Center and TVCC Palestine Campus and future TDCJ Regional Training Center. Okay, we have a couple of people I'd like to introduce here in the back of the room here. Uh, Chris Trahan, would you mind standing or raising your Chris is the executive director of the Palestine Economic Development Corporation. And we have Dan, and I'm going to mispronounce your last name, Bolcher. Bossler. Bossler. I'm close. I'm getting close. Dan is, uh, is a member of the uh, Palestine Economic Development Corporation board. So we appreciate you guys being here tonight. And you may be able to help me along the way here. If you, if you think of something that I need to say that I haven't said, let me know. But I, I'd like to spend just a few minutes talking about the op two options that we have uh, in Palestine. And first of all, let me also say thank you. Thank you to the Palestine Economic Development Corporation. And thank you for the partnership that we have developed and that we have. And uh, we're going to do whatever we can to strengthen the city of Palestine and the Palestine community in the future. And I think that's the direction that we're trying to go here tonight and in the future. I don't have this as a, a decision uh, tonight because, uh, again, we talked about this at our last meeting. Um, the, there's, some, there's some data that we need to collect or some information that we need to get, especially regarding the um, Palestine Workforce Center or the mall area. We're trying to evaluate the cost of ownership to that facility uh, in terms of future cost as well as current cost uh, of acquiring that, that, that uh, facility. Um, we have two options that are, on the, are going to be on the table, as we talked about before. One option is going to be to um, acquire uh, ownership of the Palestine Workforce Center. And in addition to that, it would be the city library, the Palestine City Library. Um, the, the Palestine Economic Development Corporation has committed to contribute $1.25 million to either one of these two projects, uh, which, whichever one that the board decides is in the best interest of the college. Um, 
The uh, Palestine Workforce Center is what we've been operating out of for the last 12 years, I believe, 13 years. And um, so it, it, we're familiar with the, with the uh, facility. But again, I think we need to do our due diligence, and we're doing that currently to be able to evaluate all the potential costs and all the potential risk that may be involved with ownership of that property. The second option would be to uh, put a, a uh, uh, workforce center, uh, a Palestine workforce uh, TDCJ uh, training center on the Palestine campus. And uh, we talked about that as well. Don't, we do, do not have all the costs on, on that, on doing that. Uh, we do know that they, the, we talked to TDCJ extensively about what their needs would be to have a training, in-service training and pre-service training program on the Palestine campus. And we do know it would take a, a new building. The new building would be somewhere around 20,000 square foot. And we're uh, now trying to go out and evaluate the cost of that, of what that new building would be. There would also be a, a need for renovation of the existing facility, if that's the decision that's made. And we would have to take, um, uh, and, and we're in the process now of determining what costs would be in terms of renovating the existing facility. Um, for sure, we're going to have to redo the parking lot. And we, we know that the parking lot, we we'll have to redo the parking lot either, either location. But at the Palestine campus, it, it needs to be redone anyways at some point in the near future. So we're, we're trying to get all the costs together of option one, what I've, that what I've given you here and the information I've provided, which would be the Palestine campus, renovation and new building. And then option two, which would be the Palestine Workforce Center and the, um, the, the cost of the potential cost of ownership of that facility. Um, the next board meeting, uh, if, if we have that, I guess we will have that board meeting on, on in April the 3rd. We'll have all this information available for you. I'll get it to you in advance of that. And hopefully uh, a decision can be made at that time in terms of which one of the two options that you believe as a board would be in the best interest of the college. Um, we, we've also had conversations with the owner of the facility, uh, owner of the mall, and he's being flexible with us in terms of, um, of of giving him an answer, but he would like to have an answer in April. Is that right, Fred? He would like to have an answer in April. So by, by the April 3rd meeting, we should be able to come to a decision in terms of which direction that you would want to go. Um, obviously, there's, there's tremendous benefits with the $1.25 million that we're getting from the Palestine Economic Development Corporation to both of us. Uh, we just need to determine which one it would be the best overall for the college at that time. Steve, I know Steve and Mike, we visited the facilities. Um, I will tell you this, that the, the Palestine Workforce Center, it will be different than what it is now. The front of the facility that you have now will no longer be the front. It will be the back. The front of the facility will be in the back. Uh, we have some we have some questions about parking, and we've talked about that already a little bit. Um, there's parking for somewhere between 135 and 150 places in in the parking uh, there for the workforce center. Uh, if we have a full class of, of students that are in our in-service program and pre-service program, and if we have if we do initiate two new vocational workforce programs there, where the uh, where the library is located, currently located. Uh, then that parking lot will be will be full. And so, you know, there's some question marks here that we have about that, and we'll talk about that at the next meeting. But uh, we visited the facility. Uh, they visited the facility. We've, uh, the Economic Development Board has been kind enough to meet with us and talk to us. Uh, we've talked to the city uh, city manager. We've talked to the uh, the mayor and other city council people. And, and I, I think Chris has been talking also with the county judge and we believe that the county judge may be, uh, uh, and the county may be a partner, could be a partner in this operation, either one of these two operations, either one of these two options with us as well. So, um, you know, I think I've said just about all that I need to say. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Chris can answer questions if you have any, uh, or Mike or Steve. Steve, did you have anything to add? I know you. we put a lot of thought into this over the last, what, two months. Thank you for Palestine to uh, have a partnership with us. 
It really meaningful to us is something that we like to do for a long time. I'd like to say thank you to Dr. Johnson, who has been involved with all the other parties down there as well. Absolutely. Uh, we started talking about what we needed to do last summer because we knew that we were going to have to be out of the, our lease was up at the Palestine Workforce Center January the 1st of 2025, which is what, 18 months away, 19 months away from now. So our lease was going to be up. So we started talking last summer about what the possibilities may be. And our initial uh, uh, thought process was that we would do something on the Palestine camp. And then the option came up with the possibility of ownership of the Palestine workforce or the mall. So uh, we've been in a lot of discussions. We've been in a lot of meetings. We've had a lot of, of, of time to talk about it. And uh, the reality is, is that we, we need to make a decision one way or the other, because if we decide to do the Palestine campus, 18 months is, is I'm not, you know, it's, it's getting shorter and shorter time frame to be able to get the work done. And as we all know, to build a building, do the architect, do the work, 18 months can go, go by quickly. So a decision needs to be made what we want to do either direction. So um, hopefully that's what we'll be able to do. I'll be able to, uh, I'll also uh, provide you financial information. I've provided financial information to you already. I've given that information to you. Uh, the in-service program and the pre-service program are, are very, very good programs for us for, for, from a financial standpoint. And uh, they always have been, and they will continue to be. And those programs are not going away. They're going to be there forever. As long as you have a TDCJ, they've got to have an in-service program, and they've got to have a pre-service program. So we're going to have those programs forever. The question here is going to be, where is it going to be? Is it going to be in the mall or the, the workforce center, or is it going to be at the campus? So... Um, I'll also say that we're adding additional training uh, that will be for officers, and that's going to be a big operation for us. What our hope is, is to make the Palestine campus or the Palestine Workforce Center a new regional training center for TDCJ, a regional training center for TDCJ. And I, I think those of you that have been in some of these meetings, including Chris, uh, understand that they're on board with that. They want to move to Palestine. They want to do more in Palestine. We've had such a great relationship. Dr. Hurley back there in the back has, has enhanced that relationship. But we've had such a great relationship with TDCJ. They want to do more with us. And this, is a, this will be an opportunity financially for us to add to what we're currently doing by having professional development programs for officers that will be coming from all over the state. Not just from our region, the northern region, but from all over the state of Texas. And we've already done a study of how many hotel rooms they're going to need and and the impact of Palestine, and it's going to be significant. So again, that's what we're that's what we're looking at here: it's the future of uh, of the TDCJ program, the TDCJ Training Center in Palestine. It's a big deal. I think it's going to be a big deal for our college. It's going to be a big deal for TDCJ, and it will be a big deal for Palestine. Okay, I'll stop there. Any any questions that I can answer for you right now? Uh, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Hurley's comments if you have any regarding uh, each of these proposals. Well, we've had a lot of conversation about that. Did you help develop these proposals? I had input into it. He had a pretty good, a good sized group that put all these ideas together. And as far as my opinion on which one would be the best, I think either one would be substantial to meet our needs. Um, I think some more work needs to be done on that. But getting close, I think, being able to make a recommendation, I think either one would work out for us. But I think if we continue to investigate, we might be able to determine which one would be the best. <clears throat> how, do you, how do you see that taking place? Um, well, I have, what, what would you do to make that determination? Well, <clears throat> as Dr. King had said, there's going to be some more meetings. I think the site that Palestine Mall is going to be isn't going to be evaluated some more. Dr. Yeah, King, we're spending we're spending a lot of time evaluating the, the, the Palestine Workforce Center and determining what the current cost will be and the future cost. Will be. And the, the next the next time that we get together and actually before that. 
I'll have those costs for you. So you can compare the cost of the Palestine Workforce Center to the cost of, of a new facility at the campus. Uh, what do you think that might? Uh, they're, 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 they're over there this it, week. It's closing in, as you say. Yeah. And that's, that's, a, that's a lot of money with a really tight time frame. And it's just now beginning to you know, get focus. So um, I, guess, I guess what I'm saying is the sooner the better. Absolutely. We, we, we started this at our, after our last meeting, we started hiring and trying to get consultants to go over and evaluate. And that's what we're doing right now. It takes time to get that done. We have an environmental guy on the campus. He's going to look for mold and any other types of environmental issues. We have a guy looking, a consultant looking at the electrical system, HVAC, floor, the uh, uh, the roof, and all, and the parking lot as well. So we'll have those numbers for you. I have a question, just a curiosity, in, in looking at that preliminary layout for TDCJ uh, on the campus. It shows a multi-purpose event center and a gymnasium. How, how does that mesh with TDCJ in service? Well, if you go over to the Palestine Workforce Center, you'd see that they have a gymnasium, and that's that's what they need. Okay. That big open area in order to do their live their live training, they have to be able. These have to be able to find those things. They have to be able to to recreate lots and areas. Um, and that can't be done in a typical classroom setting. It's got to be a large space. We we asked TDCJ. We asked TDCJ to tell us if we were to move to the to the Palestine campus, what would we need to do to renovate the campus to make it work for them? And that's what they got. Uh, is there any different or equal commitment from the state with regard to uh, their obligation to the college? You know, we experienced during COVID where basically it just completely shut off. And it, as I recall, state agreements sometimes are kind of a one way street that uh, if you're about to spend $5 million or whatever, you, uh, you usually want a, a good agreement. Is, is there any, any likelihood or reason to expect that that might improve? Well, <clears throat> When the COVID, you know, when COVID was at its height, our pre-service program continued. We just kept on. There was no interruption of those services or those courses. We just continued. And the service was disrupted, but it did come back. The pre-service just marched on. That's kind of the way TDCJ operates. I think this would be a great partnership. I just don't hardly see how it could go wrong. But and, and Mr. Mike, that's one of the reasons why we moved into the online. A portion of some of the training is so that if another situation like that happened, we had a backup for where it wouldn't completely shut down as well. And we meet we meet weekly uh, with David Deborah and Matthew Andre and some other people from CDC Day um, and, and continually discuss. So the commitment is there from CDC Day to continue with this. Very good. Thank you. Welcome. Anybody have any other questions? Again, I express appreciate if you would like to go see the facilities between now and uh, next couple of weeks, just contact me. I'll be happy to take you over. You can look at the Palestine Workforce Center and you can look at our what our proposal is for the, uh, the pa Palestine campus. And uh, I know Steve and, and Mike have been over there multiple times. So if you'd like to go, I'd be happy to take you over and show you the facilities and what we're doing. I will tell you this, that the, to do something more on the Palestine campus, is going to enhance the Palestine campus in many different ways, other than just TDCJ. So I think Steve and, and Mike, we've talked about this already, but there's, there's, it, it will bring back a full parking lot on the Palestine campus, uh, in, in, if that's if that's the one that's decided is the best option. <clears throat> David, David, I know that uh, there's just one man speaking, but uh, what's the uh, major that we spoke with? Is uh, Andrew Tate. Van, Randy Vanderton. Uh, he is over this program and our office they meet with him weekly. And he's excited about Palestine. He wants everything to be channeled to Palestine. And they can come down from another spot. But I mean, in terms of their enthusiasm to be there and their hopes for the future, they were very positive that that's where they want to be. 
Okay, Chris, did you have anything you wanted to add to the conversation? Or are you good? Well, I'll just say that uh, Alcine Economic Development Corporation appreciates this opportunity to work with UBCC as a cherished community partner in education. Uh, my board and multiple members of our city council see the extreme amount of value, not only in having the state training take place in Palestine, but in having a pathway for good paying careers with state level benefits for individuals in our region. So we want to be partners with TBCC in any way we can. We want to, you know, be helpful in this process. So we're your resource in that same right. So I'm just happy to be here and thankful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. So we'll uh, just table this. Actually, there was it's only for discussion, so we don't need to vote. But we can move on, and we'll have this set up for the next meeting. No, we're good. Okay. Okay, item number nine can discuss the physical mm -hmm. 20, 23, and 24 college calendar. Uh, ho hopefully you've had an opportunity to look at that. Uh, Kristen, did you want to say anything about the calendar for next year? Well, we, uh, we did have to make uh, probably this one change that uh, might not be an interest, but we had to move when our fall break was from a Monday, Tuesday to a Thursday, Friday. Um, in order to ensure that we have eight week terms, really eight week terms in each semester. Otherwise, you can see that it's really a carryover from what we've done in, in, in the past tradition. We follow a calendar that's a coordinated board sets up for us in terms of beginning dates, ending dates, 16 week semesters, eight week semesters, and then we work around that with everything else that we've got. So, anybody have any questions about that? So to hear a motion, we'll approve the calendar. Dr. Terry makes a motion and uh, Jerry Stone seconds the motion. Any further discussion? It's not all in favor, say aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item number 10, discuss the PVCC Police Department's racial profiling report. This is a report that we're required to do each year. Um, I know that you, those of you who've been here, you've seen this report before. Hopefully you had an opportunity to look through there. Uh, Dr. Parnell, do you have any comments about the report? Or? Well, I would just say that every time we get this report, we make certain that everything that we do is above board and everything that we do is defensible uh, under the laws of Texas. And if you're curious uh, what those requirements are, they're on page one of nine, uh, and you can see what those requirements make us do. And um, uh, other than, I'm sorry about this period, but other than one mistake, which I would, I would correct, two and three is five, not four. Uh, so we'll correct that that error. But other than that, it looks to me like we're doing a pretty darn good job with our, with our campus rules. Is that report for, for an annual, does that cover one year period? Because I could not see, and maybe I just missed it somewhere, but I could not see what the reporting period was. It, it a lot of information in there, fairly small enough. They are pages and pages of data, and it involved a total of seven contacts by Redford. Well, and that's, I had that same question last year. You know, how come we only had four uh, cars that were stopped, you know, in, in a year? And basically, we do a lot of our, our work on foot. Uh, we, we don't do a lot of work in the car pulling other cars over. Uh, we work with students in the dorms and in the other buildings. So, so that's why this is the way it is. We, if, if no one has any questions, we would ask for uh, approval of that. So, is this an academic year or is this a annual? It's an annual leave it's, it's annual by uh, calendar year because we, I think, they produce this report uh, at the end of June. Okay, Dr. Clayton, you make a motion. So moved. And Steve seconds the motion. All in favor say aye. All opposed, like sign, motion carries. Item number 11, consider and discuss Texas Commission on Community College Finance. I hope you had a, also had an opportunity to look over this. This is something that almost all the community colleges in Texas, all 50 of them will be doing or are currently looking at. This is the resolution of support for the Texas Commission on Community College Finance recommendations and final recommendation report to the 87th legislature. This is the new, uh, now it's House Bill 8, I believe, which has just come out recently. 
that is uh, the new funding so, uh, for community colleges. We have really looked, there's a lot of detail that we still do not know yet, but we have looked at this proposal. Uh, we've talked about it for a year, over a year. And we believe this is gonna be a benefit to TVCC. We believe it'll be a benefit to all community colleges to be performance funding, performance-based funding. And uh, we believe that we are at, the, at this college at least in a prime, uh, primed and ready to go in terms of being able to have uh, um, uh, additional funding that would come from performance-based funding. So I, I would I would recommend as the president of the college that the board uh, approve this resolution of support. I believe there's 28 community colleges that have already done it, and most of them are doing it in April. So um, I would ask that uh, the board approve that. The last information I had, and I'm happy as I'm sure you know, is that you are, but I only saw about 18 or 19 that had actually taken action to to enlarge the support. Um, and it was interesting that including three who were part of the commission itself, um, some um, ancillary support part, but had important roles in it. And, and their colleges have not yet endorsed them. That just may be timing. It's they timing. They just haven't gotten around to it you know, yet, but I believe that that um, work was completed and final final report issued in October. The, yeah. The 18th, if I recall. Mm -hmm. So okay. it has been quite a while already, but but you're not aware of anything that, that would suggest that the numbers are are not overwhelming. You think they, well, they I think they're work. overwhelming in our favor to be able to move forward in terms of performance-based funding. Okay. So um, I, I I was told it was 28 community colleges. That's as of this week. As of this week, is 28 community and, colleges. And that may be yeah. because this information is yeah. percent a few days ago. Yeah. So maybe that number is added up. I'm going to be surprised if, if if over 40 of the community colleges in 50 of the 50 do not yeah. support this. I, okay. I, it's not a big deal, as far as I'm, I'm sorry, but I would accept your recommendation. But okay. it, it seems to me, just one opinion, that the real problem is is it's not with the with the formula funding; it's with the lack thereof, and that's what we have historically have dealt with with the state's declining level of support, and yet it appears this has aspirations to kind of reinvent the whole wheel and make everything better, but that just doesn't really seem to offer much detail of how any of it's going to get there, other than just it needs to, and it needs, you know, 600, 650 million more dollars in order to do great things. But it's, it's your confident opinion that it will be better to throw out the old and, and, and bring in something like this. 100%. Gotcha. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, do I hear a motion? Uh, Mike makes a motion. Uh, Terry seconds, Dr. Terry seconds the motion. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Number 12, consider and discuss renewal of the Hunt Brothers contract groundkeeping. We have really had uh, a success with the Hunt Brothers over the last four years. They've done it really, really good job. Prior to having them on our campuses, we had issues. Since we've had the Hunt Brothers, we have not really had issues. Uh, and they've done, I think they've done a great job. We had a five-year contract with them. Uh, we, we uh, in the contract, it stated that they would not increase their uh, a rate in the first four years, which they have not done. This next year is the fifth year of their contract. Uh, in, in the contract, initially, it said they could increase their uh, on, in the fifth year by 6.5%. So they're increasing what they've been doing for the last four years, 6.5%, uh, which makes it up to $286,489.80 for this next fifth year, one year period. Sometime next year, you'll have to renegotiate probably for another long-term or short-term, whatever you want. But I, I, I tell you, I am very pleased with them. I think I'm speaking for almost everybody saying that they have done a good job for us. If you go around the campuses, all the campuses, Carroll campus, 
Palestine campus, Kaufman campus, Athens campus, the park area over, over here, they've done a good job. I, I would recommend that we uh, approve this a fifth year uh, increase of six and a half percent uh, and, and the fifth year part of the contract, fifth year. Here, just for my information, uh, should they have the opportunity to increase, have a fuel surcharge when fuel went up last year, or were they stuck with their fixed rate? They were stuck with their fifth fixed rate for four years. Yeah. People I know that were in that business got slammed last year when gasoline got double. And uh, so, we got a pretty, you guys made a pretty good deal four years ago. And they, they, they honored you too. And they honored you, that's right. They got, they got hurt. Okay, now here motion. Steve Sutton makes a motion. Jerry seconds a motion. Any further discussion? If not all in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item number 13, consider and discuss bank depository. Um, David, do you want to say anything? Sure. Uh, for, we've, uh, this is annually we like to continue to stick with prosperity. Uh, they've got a good business partner, especially through the CRP. Uh, and they really provide that being our main depository for zero cost. And so we'd like to recommend that we extend that contract for one more year. And that's our only list. So moved. Okay, Dr. Clayton that makes a motion to approve it. Dr. Terry seconds a motion. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. aye. All opposed like sign. Motion carries. <laughs> Item number 14, discuss Department of Education audit. As you know, we've been talking about this and discussing this for a long time. Uh, I think we're getting a little bit closer to being able to put together a final uh, proposal to the DOE. Uh, we've had Dr. Price working with us. Uh, she's truly been a blessing for the college to have and, and help us work through this audit process. Uh, she has, well, she's been exactly what we've needed. Uh, so um, again, I won't go into all the details, but I'm gonna let, uh, I guess, David and Philip, if you guys would like to just kind of give a brief update on where we are and then answer any questions that you may have. If you go to page, the last page here in the handout that you have, um, I guess that would be page three. Yeah, page three. That kind of gives you, starting with number nine, all the way down through 14, kind of gives you a good summary of where we are with it. But Philip, if y'all would like to make some comments. Sure. And, and, and Dr. King, you're, you're correct. We've, we've come here several times and we've talked about most of this. If you look at page one, it's simply a recap over what we've already talked about. Um, <clears throat> as Jerry mentioned, um, we did hire Dr. Jolene Price about suing for us because she's an expert in the field and she's nationally known. Um, so I give her lots of credit for helping us work, this, work through this issue. I uh, also give lots of credit to the folks on campus. Uh, they've worked weekends, they've worked overtime, they've done a lot of work for this. And the thing that, you know, I would say, I would tell you to let you know is none of them were here with this problem. So they're fixing a problem that, that existed when they came on board. So um, it's, it's one of those, those things they want you to you know about that. If you do look quickly at page two, I know if you, want, you were concerned last time about the, the varying prices and how much we're going to owe back to the DOE. I've tried to be as uh, specific as I can about where those costs are coming from and what, what, what we did wrong to incur those costs. So you can see that in items number six, seven, and eight. Um, and then as Dr. King mentioned, um, Dr. I'm sorry, numbers nine through 15 are really where we're, where we're going from here. And gives you a little bit of a summary. Uh, you can see number nine, and I'll, I probably will let David talk more about this, but I know one of the concerns that we had talked about time was potential penalties and interest. We've tried to give you a, a, an idea of what those might be. Uh, it's very hard to go out online and find any examples of this to follow. They just don't, they don't appear online. Um, so we don't really have anything to go on except what Dr. Price is telling us that her experience has told her. So that, that's why it's such a broad range right there. Um, and number 10, you can go through and look at that. Um, and I, I will call your attention, I think, from number 15. It is likely that we will be given multiple years to deal with this. 
it's likely that it may be one year or more before we ever hear back from the DOEs. If you remember, before we ever got our original report, it was like it was over a year from the time they had been on campus. And this is a far more difficult document to deal with than that original report. So um, Dr. Uh, Price is saying that it could be one, two, maybe even more years before we ever hear anything back from them. And so many of us could be retired by that point. Who knows? Um, somebody else would be able to deal with this at that time. But if you have any qu questions, then David and I will be happy to, to entertain them. And David, I don't know if you have anything you want to add. No, I just, I think I mentioned uh, for this board that uh, my intent at least would be uh, after we file the final report, it's done, it's in, then to, to come back to this board and reserve an amount that, that we all agree upon out of cap reserve. Uh, to set that money aside until this is resolved. And in addition, we would, we would report, uh, in conjunction with our external auditors, we would report a contingent liability. Uh, they would assist on it, I feel certain, for this amount of money. Uh, in some amount, uh, working with Kevin. But those are the two things, uh, possibly even at the April 3rd meeting, would be quickly after we had submitted it. But that's what I'd like to have this board approved is of setting some of them outside out of that cap reserve as a as a reservation, if you will, for this bit. Uh, uh, I think it would you would you be good? I mean, as far as it's being an emergency to set them aside uh, or establish a reserve and they come before it is coming from obviously cap reserves a big bucket. So you know if you know, I was kind of turn that way for some Talk about that a little bit, but um, you're not under any any time pressure to no, go. Not, not at all. Right. Okay. Um, uh, right. Well, that, that would be interesting. Um, yeah. And a question, I guess, Dr. Parnell. We have both overfunded and underfunded. Right. And if I, if I take those meanings, the billion ninety four underfunded, which is twenty nine hundred plus. Sorry, uh, what page are you The handout page. The, I guess the last one. Okay. Yeah. Um, when we say underfunded, it would be underfunded. We underfunded students because we calculated the amount of aid they should have received in okay. right. I follow that. Now, in, in cases where we, we, uh, we overfund, so DOE is saying, well, we want that money. DOE, for what we are, for, for we what want we, us to give it to them. Well, we, they want us to give us what we overfunded. Sure. Well, I'm overfunded, yes. But yes. I was thinking, you know, like, if, if you never gave away the money, what well, why do you have to give the deal? Well, that's not part of what we're talking about with, with this. I don't believe we need those. That, we're not going to pay that underfunded back because we never received it. What, what yeah, exactly. in the beginning of all of this, what we were afraid was they were going to have us go out and find those individual students and yeah. how to fund them appropriately. But that doesn't seem to be the case in any of the previous issues like this with Dr. Price's been involved in. So we, we should not have so to do that. So what other funding you're not getting uh, additional action? Okay. Now, just looking at your total there, the 2175 ineligible and, and overfunded, taking its meaning the way we just talked about. Um, is that to deal with saying that we, we got that money under the, the incorrect Correct. Correct. Okay. We, we, we calculated those all those totals wrong uh, at the time, and so we do that. We, we are going to be required to pay that back or pay some portion of that, depending upon what the right. DOE's, what DOE's decision is at that time. Okay. Uh, so, in, in that in that instance, the college got the money, and that was for tuition, various costs associated with that. So now, David, turning to you, we basically overstated our financials for that period of time by that much money. Is that what we'll translate that into? Well, if you took that into income, and you're going to have to give it back. You're going to have to expense it. Correct. The current period. Yeah, I don't. That was part of what you know. I don't know if Kevin would have looked at this as a restatement. That's where, that's where I'm going. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, and who all gets involved in that? 
Well, we really did that all over the creation, you know, in the regulatory. Right. right. Well, I think what they would, it would be on the textures uh, audit, possibly, um, just as a prior period adjustment. I mean, we wouldn't go back and restate all those financial statements. Uh, we've had a prior period adjustment since I've been here, but it really gave you guys fund balance, if you will. I mean, we don't, that's typically the way you handle it. And, and I would assume, especially for something this large, that's what he would do because it's not a it's not a current year event. It's a prior year event. Mm -hmm. But since you may pay it back in the current year, I don't know. We, when we record the liability, um, I like, that's why I want to talk to him is the liability will be on the balance sheet. I just don't know what he's going to do with the other side of it. Yeah. Well, that's what I was curious about. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's maybe all the more reason to, to, to have that information come to hand before we decide how we're going to reserve against it or, or oh, that it, part too. Absolutely, Dave. That, yeah. That's fine because this will be this entry and all this discussion will be a part of the audit. Right. And that's not going to happen you know, until August. So, no, I was just bringing it. If that's something the board wanted to do, but I'm, I'm working to find a way to get it well. Okay. So. So we and at least need the mentally reserved. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. 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 Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We're good. I think. Anybody else have any questions? Thank you. Make a motion for we, we don't, we don't don't sure that. That. Okay. Uh, Number 16, consider and discuss personnel updates. Uh, 15. 15, consider and discuss local board policy. Okay, uh, consider and discuss local board policy, policy updates. Uh, this is, again, something that we do usually twice a year, I think. Usually do it in the fall and do it in the spring. But these are, uh, TASB provides legal and local policy updates. These are updates that's been provided to us and um, I've had the opportunity, all the VPs have had the opportunity. I think Janine and her staff have had the opportunity to go through these. And we're, um, yeah, these are basically pretty much required for us to go forward with these um, uh, policy changes. The reality, if you look through here, there's only two of them that's major. Uh, and what that one of them deals with grievances and complaints. And I think it's a good change, by the way, uh, that the change that they've made here. And then the other one is with the child injury reporting. And I'm not real sure exactly where that's coming from, except it's probably coming from the state, CPS, I'm guessing. But it has a whole bunch of information, new information, changed information about reporting any sort of physical or mental health uh, issues with um, children, which we don't really deal with a lot, but we do deal with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, we deal with it when we find out that, that, that there's there's an issue. We haven't reported. Faculty member, me, a student comes in and tells me that there's a child abuse issue, I have to report it. And that's what this is. Right, Janine? Yes. So I, I would, unless you have any questions, Janine, do you have anything else to add? No, I can just say, um, with respect to the employee grievance policy, we work very closely with the order in providing that. So, um, I think it's got some really good changes, and I think it's necessary. So, we have to approve on that. We do. We can ask for any questions that anybody may have. If not, we'd ask for approval. One day makes a motion. Mike seconds a motion. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carried. At this time, I would like to make a statement. <clears throat> I am announcing my retirement from the Trinity Valley Community College Board of Trustees as of this date, after serving 23 years on the board. The college has been a big part of my life. I have enjoyed serving on the board. I appreciate the support and cooperation from you, my fellow board members. Thanks for honoring me with the chairmanship for the past 16 years. I will pass this letter on to Vice President Steve Grant. Uh, before I 
quit talking about my <laughs> resignation. I'd like to <clears throat> take just a few minutes to point out some things that I'm real proud of that has happened during my time. Uh, <clears throat> you might not, a uh, lot of this you, you folks have never heard of, but in 1960, well, let me back up. My wife and I was talking today. Uh, we've been involved in this college 64 years. Mm. I doubt if there's anybody in this whole college district that has had more contact with this college than we've had. I graduated from high school uh, on the last day of May, I guess, of uh, 1956. And three weeks later, I was enrolled in college here. Uh, but anyway, in 1960, I was working at Tri-County Ford in Maybank, Texas, for my dear friend, Andrew Gibbs. All of you have heard that name. Andrew served on this board 18 years as chairman. And so he, I, I, I was very well acquainted with what was going on with the college back in those days. Uh, <clears throat> he, uh, let, let me tell you, the, the, he, was, he had served 18 years when he got uh, when he got sick and and uh, and died, Ron Day took his place on the board. Okay, Doctor M. L. Reisinger took his place as chairman of the board, and Doctor uh, Reisinger served until he till his death at two o four. Then at two o four. Bob, Dan, uh, Bob McDonald came in and took it and served seven years, to, brought it to two, 2011. And then I took over 2011. And, and so that's been a trend for, for chairmanship of the boards uh, since 1960. Uh, I have uh, served on, on the uh, Foundation board, my whole term uh, while I'm here, while I was on ser serving on this board. Uh, I, I joined the board on March the 4th of 2000, and I'm leaving the board on March the 23rd, 23rd, uh, 23. Uh, during that period of time, I've missed three board meetings. Mm -hmm. um, I've attended practically every graduation ceremony uh, during my time on the board. Uh, I wanted to tell you something that you really won't believe. The year of 218, the year before the pandemic, we were so involved in regional ball playing and all that. Till I kept up with the activity I did that year. In the year of 218, I did over 50 activities for this college. I have attended uh, most of the our national associations, ACCT. I've attended most of their national meetings, and I've attended most of the state CCATT meetings. Um, I wanted to tell you the reason why that uh, uh, I gathered so much time. We for seven years about 12 of us have followed the, the boys and girls playoffs we have uh we went to hutchison kansas bozer uh salina kansas bozer city louisiana lubbock Coppice cove uh jacksonville texas 
And uh, one other, which other? Uh, anyway, that that's the areas that we traveled in making those football, uh, those basketball games over about a seven year period. And let me tell you one quick funny story. I I never did talk about it very much, mm -hmm. but about six years ago, we were at Salina, Kansas. It came a good snow and ice storm that night. We got up the next morning, we had about six inches of snow and ice on the ground. So we talked about what we was going to do. <laughs> so uh, uh, Ann and I was traveling in our, in our Lincoln car and I was following Dr. Jerry. He had a van load of folks. And so we decided we'd just go ahead and make it back to Texas. Well, anyway, we left our hotel about 8.30 that morning, and we had gone about 20 miles, and we came up to this big high bridge, and I, I was watching Jerry, and Jerry went up over that bridge and didn't make a bubble. So I came up behind him, and boy, when I got on top of that bridge, my car spun around about three times, tore up both bumpers on my car. Front and back. So, uh, uh, by the way, we stopped and helped. <laughs> we did stop and help. Uh, I'm real happy that. Uh, when the highway patrol got there, he did. you have your seatbelt on? <laughs> you know what was so funny? I had just had, I'd, I'd had some other accidents in that car and had had a, a new bumper put on it before we went to Salina. <laughs> I came back home the next week and pulled in my regular body shop. And I said, look here. He said, boy, you a hell on the bumper. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm real expect. Uh, I'm especially happy that I had any part in securing the 105 acres from the White family, which uh, valued probably around two million dollars. Uh, but anyway, uh, I feel real good about that, and I'm proud I had a part in it. Uh, The thing that I'm the most proud of is this college has made it available for my family to go to school. If it hadn't been for this college year, none of my family would have gone. But anyway, uh, I, I started out here, I served two semesters here and then I transferred to, to uh, uh, East, uh, East State at Commerce, Texas, yeah, East, uh, East Texas State at Commerce. And uh, then Ann graduated and she went on to Commerce and got her uh, teacher's certificate. But anyway, out of my family, I've had eight people to graduate from this college. And so that makes me feel real good that, uh, and they're, they're all, uh, being very successful in in their in their jobs, and this college made it available for all of us to do that. <clears throat> I have served on the select committee for three presidents. Dr. Jason, you're the last one. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I enjoyed that, and. Uh, And so uh, I could stand here and talk all day about the things that that has happened during the time I'm on the board, but these are just a few things that I really did appreciate and enjoy doing. And it has been a great privilege to serve on the board. And uh, I think some folks thought I never would retire, but anyway, I'm retiring tonight. So good luck to each and every one of you board members in the future and just keep the heritage of this college going.
Okay, we'll move on with them and consider the uh, consider and discuss personnel updates. We have these are again the normal um, uh, hiring, uh, resignations, terminations, retirements, and new hires. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. If not, we'd ask for a motion to approve. Dr. Terry makes a motion. Second. Dr. Clayton seconds the motion. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. All right, we need to. We have no exec executive session, so we need a motion to adjourn. Sorry. I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you.